Hi and welcome again to the channel, it's good to see you and thanks to so many of you who are subscribing each day. If you haven't subscribed by the way, there's a subscribe button appearing there in a moment so please do click that because we've got some great content every Tuesday and Thursday. Today's video is entitled Document As You Grow and it's come about because of something that happened yesterday. John comes into my office, who's one of our customers, and he's two or three doors down the road um, and says to me, um, Paul, our broadband's gone off. So I said, okay, John, not, not a problem. It's quarter to six in the evening. Everyone else has gone home, but he was finishing things up and noticed his broadband had gone off. So I said, okay, fine. Have you tried turning your router off and on? Now, bear in mind, this is about, this video is about documentation. I'm not gonna go into technical details. There's nothing wrong with the router, everything's fine. I buzz through to the internet guys and say, um, can you tell me what's happening with this telephone number? And they said, uh, yeah, it's off. I said, oh, yeah, I know it's off. Uh, why is it off? Oh, well, because there's a line cease gone through today. Really? That's a bit strange. John, have you asked us to turn off your internet connection? No, I definitely haven't done that. Definitely not. Okay. Have you had your BT? Has anyone told BT to turn off any numbers? Mm, don't think so. Okay. Well, hang on. Here's the telephone number that your broadband sits on. Do you recognize that? Oh, yeah. John's face changes at this point and says, that's our old fax line. We didn't think we needed it anymore. Now, putting a cease on the line means BT has turned off that line. And, it's, and anyone that's dealt with this before will know it's not a simple, can you turn it back on, please? Once the cease has gone through, you have to wait 24 hours before you can re ask for the line to be started again and that can take anything from a day to two to three weeks so you can pay extra to have them expedite it but that's a couple of hundred pounds now i understand that my stomach is rumbling now i understand that uh Every business has to go through cost saving exercises and you may do that quarterly, you may do that annually. Most people do it annually. Uh, I tend to do it biannually. So, uh, or sorry, not biannually, twice yearly. So every six months. Because there's nothing worse than recurring revenue going out of the business every month, you have to ask yourself, why are we spending this money? I understand that. But if you have a document that says, this telephone number is our fax line, it's also our broadband line, our telephone fax is provided by BT, our broadband is provided by IT Authority, then when you go down the list of things you can cut back on, you might say, well, we need to speak to both BT and IT Authority to find out what impact this is gonna have. It may be obvious, you can't cease that at that point, but it's not written down anywhere. The only reason they know it's their fax line is because they see a telephone bill every month with different numbers on it and they think, well, we don't really get any faxes anymore. We don't need that number, let's turn it off. And to be fair, if you don't have a document, we call it an operations manual that states exactly what everything is, then that's when you can run into trouble. And the best time to start your operation manual is when I started mine, which was day one of the business. Well, now let's be honest, probably two weeks into the business. I decided that it was obvious I was going to have to employ people and that I needed other people to be able to act on my behalf when I wasn't around in a meeting or whatever. So the operations document gives you that ability to just say, well, you know, if, if you're not available because you're on holiday, then at least your business can, can carry on running in your absence because your staff can refer to that document and can act on it. And when you're sitting around with your other colleagues deciding on what you can cut from the budget and what you can't, you just go through your operations and just say, well, hang on, yeah, what's this for? Oh, hang on, let's look that up. Oh, yeah, 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 we've got that number, that's for this and that's for that. Oh, well, we better not switch the internet off. No, that would be a bad idea. Simple document like that would save you a lot of time and effort. If you would like me to send you a template operations manual, a template document, I'm happy to do that. Please click the button down there and that will allow you to uh, register onto our newsletter 
uh, it's going to take you to a specific page for this video so that I will know that actually what you want is the operations manual. And yes, I'm going to subscribe you to our newsletter. Of course I am. But I'm also going to send you uh, a template document so that you can fill that out as you go. Easy to start one and start one early. It's a five minute job when you're just starting out. It's a hour or two's job when you've been going a few years. And if you've been going 16 years like we have, and I had to today write our 17 page operations manual, I reckon it would take several weeks, if not an entire month, to collate all that information. But as it's been collated as we went, it's no problem at all. So that's my advice to you. Document everything in your business as you grow and don't, uh, don't leave it until you've, you've grown and suddenly think, hang on, what do we use that for? That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button and do that. And we will see you on the next video. We release videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and it's always something around technology and relating to business growth. So that's it for today. All that's left for me to say is thanks for taking the time to watch. <laughs>